After Princess Adan said she wanted to marry Prince Ukandu, things got quiet and awkward between her and Arinze. Arinze pulled his hands away from hers and moved back, creating space between them. He looked at her with sadness and shock in his eyes. After all these years of me being there for you and my family, accepting you despite your condition, Arinze said, his voice shaking with emotion. This is how you'll repay me? I can't believe you're letting me down again. Adan felt guilty seeing Arinze's pain, but tried to explain her tough decision. I know you've been there for me, Arinze, but it's hard for me to stay with you. I'm royalty, and I have to marry someone of the same status to honor my family's legacy. Please try to understand. She continued, hoping he would understand. The prince promised to bless you and give a big sum of money to you and your family. He'll build a big house with guards and servants. I think that's a good reward for what you've done for me. But Arinzi wasn't interested. He shook his head strongly. I helped you because I love you, Adan. I didn't do it expecting anything in return. I won't accept the prince's offer. I don't care about his money. I don't need it. His clear refusal to take any reward lingered in the air. Adan had hoped he would understand better. She sighed sadly, realizing Arinzi couldn't be persuaded. Her heart felt heavy as she prepared to say goodbye to the kind drummer who had loved her so much. I came to share my decision so it won't surprise you later. Thank you for everything, Arinze, she said, trying to keep her voice steady, despite tears welling up in her eyes. She stood up slowly and began to walk away, leaving Arinze heartbroken in their once special meeting place in the forest grove. He watched her go, feeling a mix of sadness, anger, and betrayal coursing through him. Arinze had always accepted Princess Adan despite her struggles with the curse. But now, her choice to marry the wealthy prince solely for status and riches hurt him deeply. He wondered if all their years together, all the challenges they had faced side by side, meant nothing to her in the end. Everywhere he looked, there were reminders of the life they planned in this hidden paradise, away from royal duties. But those dreams were now shattered by Adan's choice of wealth and status over true love. With a heavy heart, Arinzi slowly packed up the picnic blanket and the basket of berry tarts he had prepared. Looking at the untouched food, his eyes filled with tears. Just yesterday, he had been excited to surprise Adani. Now, the sweet pastries left a bitter taste in his mouth. Trying to understand what just happened, Arinza walked home, feeling like his heart was breaking with each step. He kept replaying their talk in his head, trying to find any sign that Adan's feelings had changed, that maybe she never really loved him. But he couldn't find any answers, only more hurt and confusion. As he got closer to the village, Arinza dreaded having to tell his father, Chief Uzo, about what happened. The kind healer had supported their relationship, and now Arinza had to admit that Adan chose wealth over their love. He pictured the disappointment on his father's face, and it made him shudder. Chief Uzo had put a lot of trust in Princess Adan, even doing rituals to lift her curse. Knowing she turned her back on that hard-won freedom would crush him. But Arinza knew he couldn't keep such a big, life-changing event from his father. He owed it to Chief Uzo and himself to share the whole truth about what happened in the forest grove. Maybe his wise father could help him. Understand Adan's confusing decision, or at least offer a sympathetic ear and some ancestral wisdom to ease Arinze's heartache. Either way, facing this alone wasn't an option. As Arinze got to his father's herbal hut, Chief Uzo sensed his son's distress right away. The village healer hurried out and hugged Arinze, his face showing concern. My son, what's bothering you? Chief Uzo asked gently, holding Arinze at arm's length to look at him. 
Arinza took a deep breath. Saying the words out loud made it even more painful. Father, Princess Adan chose to marry Prince Ukundu instead of me. Chief Uzo looked shocked, but he stayed silent, letting Arinze continue. Arinze felt grateful for his father's patience and wisdom. The prince offered a lot of money and even a big house with servants for our family if Adan married him. Arinze explained, his voice full of pain. But I refused his offer. I didn't do things for her expecting to get something in return. Tears filled Arinze's eyes as he remembered their talk in the forest. My love for the princess was pure and unwavering. Doesn't she care about that after everything we've been through? Chief Uzo hugged his upset son, letting him share his pain and anger. The old healer stayed quiet for a while, gently stroking Arinz's hair like he did when Arinz was a child. Finally, he spoke calmly. I'm sad and angry about the princess's choice too, my son. You gave her your whole heart during her troubles. To have that love rejected for material things is a big insult. Arinze nodded, more tears falling at his father's words. At least Chief Uzo understood how hurt and betrayed he felt. But then Chief Uzo continued. But we have to handle this with maturity, considering our respected positions. Arinze looked at his father in surprise. Was he saying they should just accept what happened? Seeing Arinze's confusion, Chief Uzo explained further. Don't worry, Arinze. There will come a time when everyone, not just in the kingdom but in the whole world, will honor and celebrate you. You just need to be patient and strong, like the mighty oak trees enduring many storms. Chief Uzo's voice became more determined. Just keep being the good, honorable man you are. The right time will come when everyone will see your true worth. Then you'll get the recognition you deserve, which is worth much more than any temporary wealth. Arinz frowned, confused by his father's mysterious words. But, father, what do you mean? Please explain clearly, because I don't understand. Chief Uzo smiled kindly and put his hand on Arinz's shoulder. Don't worry, my child. When the right time comes, you'll know it for sure. Until then, trust in the wisdom of our ancestors. They've always guided us well. Though still puzzled, Arinze had complete faith in his father's wisdom. He nodded slowly, feeling some hope rising inside him again despite the pain from Madan's rejection. Maybe there was more to this situation than he could see right now. Chief Uzo seemed to sense some greater plan or destiny for Arinze. So, he decided to follow his father's advice and be patient through this tough time. Thank you, father. Your words give me comfort, even if I don't fully understand them yet. Arinzi said, hugging his father tightly. I'll try to stay brave and move forward, just like you said. Chief Uzo smiled proudly and hugged his son back. As the evening shadows grew longer, they found solace in their strong bond and the unseen powers that watched over them. Chief Uzo nodded. That's my brave son. Now let's make some calming tea from Willow Bark. You've had a tough day. Meanwhile, Princess Adan continued her plans and kept getting closer to Prince Ukandu. She met her father, King Chukwemeka, to tell him about her decision. Father, I've already told Arinzi about my plans to marry Prince Ukandu, Adan said firmly. The king wasn't happy to hear this. He reminded his daughter of what he'd said before. Didn't I tell you to wait and let things happen naturally? Why are you rushing into this? And why are you throwing away the love and support Arinzi gave you all this time? King Chukwemeka sighed deeply. I can't force you to marry someone you don't want to, and I won't take away your rights as a princess. But, he looked at Adan seriously, our ancestors will see that I don't agree with your choice to leave the man who stood by you through everything. But Adan didn't listen to her father's words. Still somewhat spoiled and not fully learning from her mistakes, 
she went ahead with her plans to marry Prince Ukandu, even though her father didn't approve. She was attracted to his wealth and status, not seeing Arinzi's true love. In the following weeks, Ukandu's people came and did all the necessary wedding ceremonies, paying Adan's full bride price to King Chukwemeka. The preparations for the royal wedding began, and it was a big, showy event attended by nobles from all five kingdoms. As the ceremony started, Arinza made the hard decision to watch from the back of the crowd, to see for himself that this was really happening. His heart broke as he watched the woman he loved exchange vows and sacred rituals with the arrogant prince. People all around him whispered and gave him pitying looks, fully aware of the painful situation. Some shook their heads, unable to believe that Princess Adan would give up a love as pure as Arinzi's for the lure of wealth. But Arinzi stayed strong, determined not to let strangers see him completely fall apart. He watched without showing much emotion until the newlywed couple left amidst flower petals and cheers. Only then did Arinza let a few tears silently slide down his cheeks. He turned away, trying to keep his head high despite the heavy weight on his heart. Walking slowly through the emptying streets, Arinzi felt completely alone until a gentle hand on his shoulder stopped him. He turned to see King Chukwemeka looking at him with deep sadness and sympathy. My son, the king began, struggling for words. He sighed deeply. I wish there was something I could have done to stop this day. You deserved better than this unfairness. Arinzi shook his head, his eyes shining with unshed tears. This was the princess's choice, my king. Maybe she was never truly mine to keep in the first place. King Chukwemeka put a comforting hand on Arinzi's arm. Don't give up on that belief just yet, young man. My daughter might have been blinded for a while, but I believe her heart will eventually find its way back to the path of truth. The tired king followed Arinzi away from curious eyes and gossiping mouths. They walked in silence for a while, lost in their own painful thoughts. As they got closer to Arinzi's small, simple hut, the king spoke again. You know, when Chief Uzo brought you into our lives all those years ago, I felt like there was something special about you. Arinze looked at him with confusion. King Chuk Wemeka smiled sadly. Yes, there was something remarkable about the humble drummer boy who showed more bravery, honor, and kindness than many royals I've known. You supported my daughter when she was at her lowest, when others might have rejected her. They stopped outside. The king turned to face him. That day, I promised the spirits that I would treat you like my own son because of the crucial role you played in Adan's journey. And that promise still holds true, despite her current mistakes. Arinzi felt emotional hearing the king's words. Even after everything, he was still considered part of the royal family. You've faced a great injustice today, my boy. King Chukwemeka said seriously. But we must believe that the ancestors haven't abandoned you completely. There are still greater stories waiting to unfold. The king reached out and hugged Arinze warmly, letting him finally cry out his grief against his shoulder. They stood like that for a while, sharing their sorrow over the princess's decisions. When Arinze managed to calm down a bit, the king held him with a proud look. You've shown amazing dignity and grace through all this. Remember, heavenly forces notice people like you, even when the world doesn't see your admirable spirit. With that, King Chukwemeka gave Arinzi's shoulder a comforting squeeze before heading back to the palace. Arinze watched him go for a moment before going into his simple hut, feeling emotionally drained, but slightly encouraged by the thought of mysterious forces still working. Arinz realized that although he lost the princess, he gained something precious, a father figure who saw his true worth beyond his common status. It was a small comfort, but it gave him a bit of strength to face the uncertain future ahead. When he got home, 
Chief Uzo was waiting outside, knowing Arinze might need comfort after such a tough time. As soon as Arinze was close enough, the healer hugged him tightly like a father. They stood like that for a while, Uzo letting Arinze find some solace in the embrace. He could feel his son's body shaking with held back sorrow. Finally, Uzo held Arinze's face in his hands and looked into his tear-filled eyes. My son, your heart has been through a lot, but don't lose hope or faith in the bigger plan. Arinze tried to speak, but the pain and confusion made it impossible. How could he feel hopeful after seeing the love of his life promise herself to another man? Sensing his son's inner struggle, Chief Uzo spoke in a gentle but firm voice. Arinze, you've shown incredible patience, honesty and bravery through all this. The ancestors have surely noticed. He led Arinze into the hut and settled him down on a woven mat before sitting across from him. The healer took out a small pouch and sprinkled a strong-smelling powder into a bowl then waved it under Arinzi's nose. Breathe this in, son. It'll help calm your troubled mind, Uzo said softly. Arinze breathed in the soothing smoke, feeling it numb his pain, if only for a moment. As the tension left his body, his father continued to offer comforting words and wisdom. What you've been through is one of life's hardest tests, to give your whole heart to someone, only to be rejected. Chief Uzo shook his head sadly. Princess Adan might have been blinded by the desire for material things after suffering for so long, or there might have been darker spiritual forces leading her away from true love. Regardless of the reasons, you need to let go of the anger, resentment, and sadness in your heart, Uzo said, patting his son's knee. Otherwise, those feelings will eat away at you like a chronic illness. Arinze finally spoke, his voice sounding defeated. How can I let go of the pain, father? Adan meant everything to me. She was my whole world. Without her, what future do I have? The healer's expression turned determined. Arinze. There's always a future and a purpose for those who've suffered greatly. The ancestors wouldn't let you go through this tough time without a reason. Chief Uzo said, You should rest now and try to sleep. We can talk more later. He took a small pouch and sprinkled a strong-smelling powder from it. Chief Uzo waved it under Arinze's nose. The smell made Arinze feel sleepy, and he fell into a deep sleep. Three years later, Princess Adan and Prince Ukandu were married and had a son named Chike. One day, shocking news spread across the five kingdoms. The High King, who ruled over all the kingdoms and was Prince Ukandu's father, had gotten terribly sick. Despite the best healer's efforts, the High King couldn't beat the illness and sadly passed away. This sad news quickly reached all the kingdoms. Kings, Chiefs and councils were told about the terrible loss of their supreme ruler. A time of great sadness was announced throughout the lands. Nobility from all over the five kingdoms travelled to the capital to say their final goodbyes. After days of mourning and funeral ceremonies, the High King was laid to rest according to ancient customs. Now, there was no king to rule. But tradition said that exactly seven days after the king's death, his eldest son must be crowned as the new ruler to govern all the kingdoms. As the seventh day approached, kings and important people from all five realms went to the old ceremonial grounds where the coronation would take place. Princess Adan was thrilled that her dream of Ukandu becoming the high king was coming true. Ukandu was also happy to become the supreme ruler he had been prepared for. On the special day, Crowds gathered from all over to see the important coronation event. Chiefs, priests and noble people arrived dressed in their best clothes. Princess Adan watched eagerly as the priests started the complicated rituals and chants. When they finished, the head priest asked Prince Ukandu to come forward. He pointed to an ancient staff and said, 
This ancestral staff will indicate if you are the rightful firstborn son and heir to the throne. Lift it from its stand. Ukandu walked up confidently and tried to lift the staff, but to everyone's surprise, he couldn't move it, no matter how hard he tried. People whispered in confusion as Ukandu struggled. Princess Adan cried, realizing something was wrong. Ukandu told everyone to stay calm as he kept trying, but the staff wouldn't budge. Finally, the head priest quieted the crowd. Prince Ukandu, it seems the gods have decided. You aren't meant to be the king. Ukandu argued, but the priest continued. I already knew you weren't the true firstborn son, but I waited for this test to show it to everyone. The crowd got louder as Ukandu denied it, but it was clear from the test that something bigger was happening. Even though Ukandu had been prepared to be the king, the gods had other plans. The head priest quieted the crowd again. Don't fight it, prince. The spirits have decided. The true firstborn heir who should be our high king hasn't been revealed yet. He looked at Ukandu, who realized he couldn't change the decision. The crowd started arguing, not knowing who should be their leader now. They had to wait to find out who the gods had chosen. The head priest then had Prince Ukandu's other brothers and sisters try to lift the staff, but none of them could move it either. Chief Uzo, sitting in a corner of the crowd, watched with a knowing smile. The head priest then announced something that would be heard all over the five kingdoms. All men needed to come and be tested to see if they had true royal blood. He set the next market day for this big event. With the coronation ceremony stopped because of this surprising turn, everyone left feeling confused and unsure. Prince Ukandu and Princess Adan went back to their hut, crying all day and too upset to eat. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, like and share, comment continue if you want to see the final part this week. Commenting continue lets us know you're excited for the epic conclusion of Princess Adan's story. If you're loving this saga and share with friends and family, we're watching for those continue comments to gauge interest in dropping part four. Soon,